So we are going to start lying down in corpse pose <laughs> to start our Halloween practice off in style. <laughs> nice, relaxing, lying down on our back. So your corpse pose is whatever it needs to be, whether the knees are bent, whether the legs are straight, whether the arms are just connected to the body or if they are uh, by the sides of the body, choose what works for you. And as you lie down here, just take a moment to let the body completely settle from your day. So whatever you have done today, let all of that go now and also what is to come this evening. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and exhale that breath out of the mouth and just sigh that breath away. And if you like, you can do that a couple more times, breathing in deeply through both nostrils and just exhaling out of the mouth, sighing your day away. And just notice how the body feels when you do take that exhale. Are you fully allowing the body to rest and relax and let go of tightness and tension? Now breathe normally through both nostrils in and out. And as you're breathing here, just feel the lungs filling, the diaphragm pushes down, the belly rises on your inhale. Everything feels quite full and energized, oxygenated. And then as you breathe out, that release of the breath, the diaphragm returns back underneath the rib cage and the breath empties from the lungs. And there's nothing to hold on to there. Then let's start to introduce a mudra here. So the mudra is a balancing mudra. And we're going to start with our thumb on our index finger. And then our thumb moves along to our middle finger. Our thumb moves along to the ring finger. And our thumb moves to the little finger. So I try and do that on both hands equally. So both thumbs touch the finger at the same time, only focusing on that hand gesture moving from finger to finger. Doesn't have to be quick. And slow it right down. And you can move along with your breath if you like. So you're inhaling as you're lifting the finger and you're exhaling as you're just gently pressing. Inhale, lifting, switching. Exhale, touching, pressing. And just focus on calm, stillness, 
peacefulness and relaxation. And then just come back to the thumb and the index finger. Just hold that mudra for a couple more breaths. And then gently open out the hands, stretch the fingers apart from one another, stretch the palm, stretch the thumbs. And then as you exhale, curl the fingers in, place the thumb over the top of the knuckles into a, a clenched fist. Now, the fist doesn't need to be tight and gripping and pressing the nails into the palm. It's another mudra. So inhale. Stretch the fingers out, exhale, curl them in, thumb goes over the knuckles. Inhale, stretch out, exhale, curl it all in. Keep moving with the breath, just a couple more. And then wiggle the fingers, move into the knuckles, move into the thumbs, move into the wrists. And just flex the wrists there, backwards and forwards, circling, rotating. Give the hands a shake. And then lift the arms up above the head. Big, big body stretch, stretch the legs away, stretch the arms up behind you and then nice and gently draw the knees in towards the chest. Exhale, lengthen the spine, spread the waist, spread the pelvis. And you can pull those knees in a little bit tighter, but you can give yourself some space between the knees so the belly and uh, rest between the thighs. And then just hold there, and you might want to just bring the hands on top of the shins if you like, or keep the hands on the knees so you can take hold of the wrists, or maybe you even take hold of the elbows. And just hold in that knees to chest. Feel that the neck is nice and long. You're not lifting or dipping the chin. Shoulder blades are spread out. Back and is connected to the earth. And then circle out the hips. Give yourself that freedom of movement into the hip joints. One way and the other. And then your choice here is that you can roll over to one side and bring yourself up to seated, or you might just take a little bit of a roll up through the spine and come straight to seated that way. Good. So let's come to seated. Whatever. That is for you, whether you're sitting on a block, sitting on a bolster, sit nice and tall. We're going to take our Nadi Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing. We're using the right hand, bringing the two first fingers, so the index and the middle finger, in towards the third eye. And we're going to close off the nostril with the right thumb and, uh, sorry, the right nostril with the right thumb and the left nostril with your um, ring finger. So breathe normally through both and exhale through both. Close off the right nostril, breathe in through the left. Close off the left nostril, open the right, breathe out. Breathe in through the right. Open the 
Open left, close right, breathe out. That's one complete round. Breathe in left. Close off left, open right, exhale. Breathe in right. Close off right, open left, exhale. So just continuing at your own pace, own rhythm of those breath ins and breath outs, trying to find the balance of inhale to exhale on each nostril. It's all about the balance through the practice today. So that's why we're doing a balancing mudras, balancing pranayama. Keeping that breath smooth, fluid, easy, little as effort as possible. Feeling the fullness of the breath on the inhale, feeling the relaxation, letting go on the exhales, just as you did when you were lying down in corpse pose. And just coming to your last and final round, finishing that off on the left exhale, then releasing the hand down, just breathing normally, noticing if those nostril channels feel equal and balanced. And if you are sitting cross-legged now, take an opportunity just to bring the other foot in front. It always feels a little bit weird, a little bit alien. We are going to get into some neck movements. So being nice and kind and careful with your neck, just gently dropping chin towards the chest. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Feel the pull down the upper back, down into the shoulder blades. There's five kilos of weight in your head, skull and brain. Breathe in, lift the gaze all the way up to the sky. We don't compress the neck, we take a lengthen and a lift. So we're not dropping the head back, but looking up and lengthening the back of the neck, so we're stretching the throat, always remembering to breathe. Exhale, drop it forward. Nothing else moves, just the cervical spine. Breathe in, lift up. Shoulders stay exactly where they are. Exhale, release to the chest. Inhale, lift. And then bring back into center. Good. Turn to one side. So again, trying to keep the collarbone and shoulders nice and level, turning the chin over to the shoulder. Bring it back into center. Track the gaze. Or you can close the eyes, taking it over to the other side. Breathe into center. 
exhale into the stretch. Breathe in, center, exhale, stretch. The chin stays parallel to the floor. Keep moving nice and fluid, left and right, looking over the shoulder. And then last time, bring it back into center. I'm going to call these the vampire bites. So taking the hand over the head, it doesn't pull the head down. It's just a little bit of extra weight. So we're just opening up this side of the neck. You can introduce the extra stretch here by reaching out that hand. But again, this hand is just extra weight. You don't have to add it. Breathe into the tight areas. Couple of breaths. And then use that hand to lift the head back up into center so that you're not using the muscles of the neck. Lifting up the hand, gently drop the ear over to the shoulder. Try not to dip the chin here or lift the chin. Try and keep the face forward. And again, those fingertips can reach away, deepening into that stretch all the way down the arm. Noticing any differences from the right to the left sides of the neck. Notice where it's still kind of tense or pulls. Release the hand and use that hand to lift it back into center. Drop the chin to the chest and move the ear to the shoulder. So these are half semicircles. Ear to shoulder, chin to chest. Smooth movements. Notice any clicking, any crunching, any grinding. If it's painful, ease off. And then last time, bring it back into the center. And let's lift those knees. Give ourselves a big hug here. Rest the belly and the chest over the thighs. Take the hands down towards the ankles and just let the head relax towards the knees. Again, there's five kilos of weight in that brain and skull. Relax it. Give in to that weight. And nice and slowly roll up through the spine. Swing the legs back around behind you. Come into tabletop. Let us find our cat and cow here. So it was National Black Cat Day uh, yesterday as well. So happy National Black Cat Day to Wesley and all other black cats. Uh, dropping through the belly into your cow and then pushing through the tops of the feet, rounding into your cat. Wesley is actually just there, but he's nice and calm and sleeping. So he's been out all day today. So again, move the spine with the breath. Freeing up each and every section, each and every vertebra. Then come back into neutral and then move the hips left and right. So the hips go left and the head looks towards the feet. You just roll over onto the shins, moving the hips left and right. And then start to circle the hips back towards the heels and come forward over the wrists. So four circles one way back to the hips. Come forward. Breathe out back to the hips. Come forward. Last time back to the hips. Come forward. And then circle the other way. So four going opposite rotation.
And once you've done your four, come back up into that neutral tabletop, widen the knees. Bring the big toes to touch. Use the block if you need to support the head. Bring the hips back towards the heels. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room here. Get the belly between the thighs. And then maybe the hands reach forward into your child's pose. Come into that nice long prone posture. Relaxing the head down and starting to feel the whole body giving in to the mat here. Feel the stretch down the sides of the body, down the arms. Try and relax through the neck and the shoulders. Try not to let the shoulders lift up towards the ears. And really start to push the hips back towards the heels so that you lengthen out a little bit more. And then nice and slowly bring those hands back and just roll up through the spine. The knees are nice and wide and tadpole. And you can come to the back of your mat and just find that nice long spine there. And just take a moment here to feel everything that we've done so far with the, the breath and the body, how your body's starting to respond of what you're asking of it today. We're just going to try and find some balance between the right and the left sides of the body. Bring the hands forward. You're going to tuck the toes underneath you. Keep the knees nice and wide and then bring the heels together into the center. So from the front, it kind of looks like that. And if you've got a block, you can use that block in front of you with your hands on the block. So this is called Flying Ghost. <laughs> so we're going to try and keep our heels pushing forward. We're going to try and keep our knees out to the side. We're going to bring our hands to the knees or holding onto that block. The spine is long. We're dropping the buttocks back towards the heels. Crown of the head reaches up. Great balance is there. <laughs> Nice and slowly, the right hand reaches down towards the mat. And here we're just going to drop that right knee down towards the right hand. Lifting up the left, up towards the sky. You're going to open through the left side of the body and the left hip. So keep opening up through that left knee. If you feel quite deep into those right toes, don't go so deep. So bring yourself back. Take a moment to find that balance once more into the center. And then again, the left hand can reach down. Again, you can fill the space with the blocks. If the hand doesn't quite meet, that's okay. And again, the knee drops down. You can fill the space between the knee and the floor, lifting up the right hand. That's really good. Nice. Lift, lift, lift. Open up through the right side of the body again. Those left toes. We're digging in, toes of fire. Opening up the right knee, right hip. Nice. And then bring it back into the center. Let's take one more little balance in that floating ghost. Pushing those heels forward. Oh, <laughs> little wobble there. And then the hands come down. You're going to lift the hips and bring the toes forward and drop into a dangle. So a, a forward fold here, you can bend the knees, drop the belly, the chest over the thighs, let the head relax or use a bolster. If you've got one handy, you can always use a bolster to support the head. And again, relax the head and the neck. Give it a little yes. Give it a little no. Feel all of the weight dropping down through the arms. Maybe you've already taken hold of the elbows. Maybe the hands are down on the mat. Start to feel the stretch through the back of the legs, back of the knees, back of the hamstrings, and now into the glutes and the spine.
slow and steady breaths. Try not to grip anywhere, including the toes. Relax the jaw and the teeth. And then gently coming up into a half lift. So if you've got those blocks handy, you can put your hands on the blocks or the fingertips go down to the mat or to the shins. A half lift is lifting the chest away from the thighs. Crown of the head reaches forward. You're going to lift up a little bit more into those sit bones back behind you. Nice long spine. And then heel toe out into malasana. So take the heels wide, again, using a block underneath. And before you just go into that posture, just move left and right before going into that uh, squat. So bringing the hands in towards the heart center here, letting the elbows rest on the inner knees. And just find your yogi squat. Nice. And again, you can always sit on that block, knees are nice and wide. The spine is nice and long here. I'm going to call this a gargoyle today. Sitting on top of the cathedrals, looking down. And releasing out of that, the hands come down first of all. You lift the hips and heel toe the feet back into parallel and then gently drop down to the knees once more. So come to kneeling. You can sit on or kneel over your bolster if you need to there. Find kneeling at the back of your mat. Again, just rest into the hips after... Um, that malasana squat there. And we're going to go into melting heart pose from here. So the hands slide forward, the hips lift, and the head comes down to a block or the mat. You feel heavy through the upper and the middle back. Exhale there. Try and relax through the shoulders. Taking a few breaths. And then from here, you're going to start to shift forward onto the forearms, keeping the knees down. You're going to keep pressing through the palms, the forearms there, lifting up through the abdominals in that kneeling forearm plank. From here, we're simply going to go into our sphinx pose, so dropping the hips. And if you need to take those elbows a little bit further away from the body, please do. And you can widen the feet. Uh, come into that sphinx pose, guarding the pyramids. Gently dropping the hips a little bit heavier here, opening up through the chest. Pushing through the palms and the forearms, trying to keep the forearms in line with the shoulders. Try not to let the shoulders, uh, try not to let the elbows splay out of the body too much.
And nice and slowly, you're going to push through the palms, lift the elbows, widen the elbows, and roll down through the belly and the rib cage. Bring the hands underneath the forehead. Bring the big toes to touch. Exhale. Deep breath out. Let go. Relax everything there after those two back bends of that melting heart and the sphinx pose. And just sway the hips left and right. Give yourself the freedom of movement through the lower back. Shake the feet, shake the legs if you like. And then just lift the knees up. Uh, sorry, lift the feet up. So bend to the knees. Keep the head down onto the backs of the hands and just windscreen wiper the knees left and right here so see if you can drop the feet over to one side bring them back into center and then drop the feet over to the other side so it's a little bit of a swizzle in the hips here twisting through the waist Windscreen wiping with the shins. Both feet moving together. Nice. And then bring them back into center. We're going to come into half frog from here. We haven't been in half frog for ages. So we lift our right knee and we bring it out to the side of our hip, dropping through that right hip there and just opening out the toes to the side. Dropping the head back down towards the mat. Or again, an option for you, if you want, is to come up into your Sphinx pose. So the knee is out in line with the hip, dropping into that right glute, right hip. And if you're in the Sphinx, you're keeping lifted through the upper body, but relaxing through the lower body. Keep focusing on the sensations that are coming up for you because we haven't done this one for a while, so noticing how it feels. And if you took the sphinx, widen the elbows, roll down. Take a moment just to rest back. And then move that right leg back in carefully. Bring the big toes to touch once more. Exhale, sway the hips out to the side. Left leg, half frog. Choosing your option again once more. Maybe you come up into that sphinx pose or you can just stay nice and low. If you did the Sphinx on the other side, it's sometimes quite quite good to obviously do it on both. So dropping into left hip, relaxing through left glute. Notice if you're tensing up into that glute. We're thinking about sliding the left knee away from the hip.
If you took the sphinx option, widen the elbows as you roll down slowly, bring the head back to the hands, pause there for a moment. And then release that left knee, left leg back into the center, big toes touch, let those heels fall out to the side, relax through the ankles, the legs, the hips, the pelvis and the lower back. Widen the feet as wide as your mat. And then take the hands to the top corners of your mat. So it's kind of like a, a, a face down star. Pressing up. These are our dancing cobras. So we're just going to circle from the waist and the rib cage, keeping the pubic bone and the hip bones grounded. Try and come up to straight arms if you can. And those arms do not have to be too close towards the body. The closer they are towards the body, the more challenging the back bend, obviously. Four circles one way and four circles the other. Really getting into the waist and the rib cage. Maybe even looking back towards the toes. Nice. And bring yourself back. Hands come down by the shoulders. Press yourself back through your tabletop. And then gently find a cat and cow there to release the spine. Let's swing our legs around in front of us for a zombie fold. Sitting nice and tall, you can always place a bolster underneath the knees. Lifting up the arms and exhale, reach forward and over. Take time to get into the posture. There is no rush to get there. Use gravity to take you deeper. Relax the shoulders. Again, letting that head release. The knees can be soft. Everything is soft. The feet are relaxed. The calves are relaxed back of the knees are breathing with you, as are the hamstrings, the glutes, and the spine. Yeah, be guided by the sensations and the feelings. Softening deeper and deeper, relaxing even more. Take a nice breath in, the arms reach past the feet. You lift up on an inhale and you come into this Frankenstein seat. Arms out in front of you, feet extended, spine long. 
sit nice and tall. We're going to take the hand back behind us and just come into a nice gentle twist. So left leg pulls in and turn around towards your shoulder, opening the chest out to the side, the long edge of your mat. You might be hugging the knee or having the elbow cross over the knee. That's a little bit deeper, but making sure the belly is free of that left thigh. Softening into the rotation of the spine. Coming back into the center, the arms go out once more into that Frankenstein pose, sitting tall, reaching, reaching fingers away. Nice. And then again, we take the hand behind us, get the belly free of the right thigh as we bring that leg in and choose our twist options from there. Stanley the skeleton is giving me a big smile. <laughs> Lengthening through the spine on the inhale, deepening the rotation into the exhale. Again, nothing's ever really forced. And then breathe in, bring yourself back into center. One last time, lift up into that Frankenstein lift. Circle the arms up above the head, all the way back behind you. The hands come behind you there and you just give a little back bend. Look up to the sky, you pull the elbows in towards one another. So you're lifting up from the sternum as if you have this piece of thread from the sternum to the sky, fingertips are facing forward and you're rolling the shoulders away from the ears. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Nice and slowly, bring yourself back. And this time we're gonna bring the legs behind us and come into some lunges. I'm gonna turn the other way. So you can use your block for these. Right leg comes forward. So just drop into these uh, nice lizard lunges. But here, if you like, you can keep the foot facing straight ahead or you can take it out to the side, wing it out like that uh, lizard. And use the blocks as you need to or maybe the hands, they can meet the mat. That's OK. So we're going to start to pull back, relaxing into that right extended leg and then drop the hips forward, opening out the chest. Nice, pull it back, half splits. And inhale, drop it forward. Exhale, pull it back. We're gonna stay there. Keep the heel on the outer edge of your mat and then walk those hands a little bit further forward. Exhale. Take a fold. Good. So ideally, the front leg is somewhere straight. It can be a little bit soft into the back of the knee. And if it's not, try and keep the body upright. So it's bent knee, leaning forward, or straight leg, body upright. Good. Maybe you lift up on your inhale 
and reach those fingertips further forward on your exhale. Now from here, we stay nice and low because we're already down in a fold. So just bend the front knee, staying low and move forward into a really low lizard. So again, if the forearms come down, great. Using the block, great. Using a bolster, great. Whatever you need. Come into that nice low lizard. Dropping the hips deep towards the mat. Trying to even out the shoulders, trying to get the chest parallel to the mat. We're not lifting one shoulder up than the other. So your right shoulder is low, as low as your left. Staying and breathing. And gently bring yourself back up. Take a moment just to get a little bit deeper into that back bend if you like. So dropping the hips bringing the shoulders back up in line with the hips and gently pull back, release the right leg. Give yourself a little bit of circle out there. Oh, I felt that right in my right higher proximal hamstring. Left leg comes forward, again, choosing the options. The foot stays facing forward. You can wing it out to the side, but keep it on the outer edge of your mat. So dropping hips down towards the front heel, extending that back leg back behind you. We're going to start to pull back the hips, extending the front leg. So it's a wide half split, dropping forward into lizard. Remember the bolsters and the blocks are there to help you through Proptober. Dropping forwards. It's all about balance in this practice, so finding right and left equally. And then the last time we pull it back into that half splits and stay and hold. We don't pull back too far. We try and keep the hip above the knee here. So we're pressing into the back leg just as much as we're pressing into the left heel. And then we reach the fingertips forward, dropping the belly and the chest on the inside of that left leg. Let the head relax between the biceps. Pull the belly in gently. If you feel super tight in that left hamstring, don't over force anything. Keep a nice soft bend into the left knee, but keep pulling those toes back towards the shin. The foot and the ankle is active. Lifting up, lengthen the fingers, exhale, deeper release. We're nice and low, so stay low. Just bend into that left knee. Stay low, coming forward, dropping that right hip flexor down, maybe coming down onto the block or onto your forearms. Again, trying to level out the chest and the shoulders so the left shoulder drops just as much as the right. That's the, uh, that's the challenge sometimes in lizard is that you, you feel a little bit lopsided in the upper body. 
because the ego jumps in and it goes, I want to get low. I want to go down onto my forearms. But your upper body can't quite make it. So that's where the blocks come in handy. Exhaling, dropping those hips and buttocks, relaxing deeper, deeper, deeper into that lizard. Hopefully with time and with gravity on your side, you're getting deeper just by breathing, just by letting go. Taking your time to come out, the hands come back down onto the mat on fingertips or the palms, dropping hips a little bit further forward, bringing the upper body up so you're trying to bring the shoulders towards the hips pulling navel gently in towards the spine and nice and slowly pull the hips back release that left leg and circle out now if you like here you can go into a downward facing werewolf lifting up the hips and just pedaling out if you want you can stay in a child's pose or a tabletop you do not have to come to that downward facing werewolf at all so just releasing through the heels feeling how flexible you feel now after your spine and hip practice and then exhaling releasing down knees come to the mat and you can sweep the arms back to the heels and let the body just melt over the thighs let the head relax to the mat or to a block let the chest and shoulders relax over the thighs Slowly roll up through the spine. Bring yourself into that kneel and just sit tall. Let the shoulders relax, nothing to do. Spine is long, hips dropping down into heels. And let's swing those legs around. In front of us, let's come to a wide leg, forward fold. So taking the legs as wide as is comfortable. Again, you can use uh, the props as you need. Bending into the knees, sitting nice and tall. And then just start to fold the chest forward. So you're hinging from the hips. It's a nice flat back. We are not caving the chest or rounding the spine or rounding the shoulders in. We are keeping the chest nice and open. And just gently press the chest down towards the mat. Notice what happens to the legs. Do they roll inwards? Try to keep the toes, knees and thighs pointing up towards the sky Keep pressing chest you'll notice a difference there good lifting up through the abdomen the spine is long the hands come in front of you and now you can relax and just take it into the fold soften into everywhere into this wide leg fold Breathe deep into the tight areas, into the stretch. You're going to be here for about 10 or 12 breaths.
keeping the breath steady. Inhales and exhales are equal through both nostrils. Lift the torso, bring the hands back into the center. And then bring the legs in nice and gently. Give them a squeeze on the outer knees. Exhale. And let us come down to the mat, lying back down. Make sure you're nice and warm. We've got one posture I'd like to do, which is a right and left leg, which is our reclined shoelace. Just when you get there, draw the knees in, lengthening out that spine once more. Just notice now how easy your knees to chest might feel, your spine might be a little bit easier, um, uh, more relaxed into the hips as well. So circle out the knees, relax into the inner thighs. This one is our crossed thighs. So we cross the right leg on top of the left. And if your hands don't quite meet your feet, you can take hold of the shins or the tops of the knees but making sure that the legs are squeezing together, like you're crossing your legs sitting down. And you can take hold of the ankles, the shins or the feet and start to pull the feet apart and pull the knees towards the center of your chest. So that's reclined shoelace. It should be targeting somewhere around that right outer hip. right glutes, try and soften out around that area. Maybe you feel it somewhere else. Keep the spine long and lengthened, the tailbone is pulling down. That's it, looking good on these reclined shoelaces. Squeeze those thighs closer to the belly, closer to the chest. Pull those feet a little bit more outwards away from one another. Nice and slowly relax the hands. Relax the legs, but keep the knees over one another. So you're just going to place the left foot down onto the mat. So you've still got your, your crossed right leg over your left. Just lift the hips up and shift them over to the right side of your mat and just drop into a nice little reclined twist there with, the, with your legs still crossed. So the right leg is still on top of the left. You're opening up into a nice little twist. And breathe in. Bring those legs back into the center. Shift the hips back into the center and take the feet wide and drop the knees towards one another into your constructive rest. Crossing over left thigh over the right. 
we pull those feet apart, maybe taking hold of the feet, the ankles, the shins, or the top of the knees. Try and squeeze those thighs together on top of one another and then pull those knees in towards the center of your chest and the feet go outwards. Deep breaths into the tight areas here, maybe happening around the left glutes, left piriformis, left hip. Nice deep exhale, pull those knees a little closer and those feet a little wider. Noticing how different it might feel on the left. Maybe you're not quite getting into the posture as you would like, but that's okay. And then nice and slowly let go of the hands. Bring the right foot down. Legs are still crossed. You're going to lift your hips and your buttock up and move it over to the left so that you then roll over onto your right hip and come into that twist. So try and keep those thighs together if you can. That means that your right knee just rests on your left calf, opening up the left side of the body. So it's a little bit of a deeper twist because we're using that right knee to pull the left leg down. Breathe it in, bring it all back into the center, bring the hips into the center. Feet now go wide, knees drop in, constructive rest, exhale there. Heel toe into parallel, draw those knees in, roll and massage out through the spine and let us find our way back into our corpse pose for our final relaxation, making yourself warm and comfortable, turning lights off if they are bright above you or using eye pillows, making sure that you've got comfortable blankets pillows, blocks, bolsters, whatever is going to work for your uh, final corpse pose for our Halloween sequence. And softening yourself down, coming into a really nice big wide pentacle. So the feet go wide, arms go wide. Relax in, and I will let you know when it's time to come back around.
Begin to take a few deeper breaths as you bring your awareness back into your surroundings. Breathe deeper and bring movement back into the hands, the feet, maybe just rolling the back of the skull gently from left to right, releasing into the neck and the shoulders. Taking time to stretch out, reaching the arms up above the head, Big, big stretch as you awaken from Shavasana and then taking your time to draw knees in. Rolling, massaging out and rolling over to one side to bring yourself up to comfortable seat. Bring the hands into the heart center. Sitting nice and tall, whatever that comfortable seat looks like for you. Let's take a moment to pause and reflect on how you felt when you came to the mat today and how you now feel going back into your evening. And always thanking yourself, your body, your breath for your practice each and every time you come to the mat, whatever you need the most. I hope you always get that when you walk away and roll your mat up, taking yoga with you into daily life. And I thank you. Namaste.